Hey guys, VBad here with another V Plays. We're hopping into the Yak 9U. I've had this plane for a really long time, decided to dust it off and take it out for a flight. I didn't have a pilot in it, so I've, this is my second battle in it. First one was a loss, so the crew's only at 96%, but we're hoping to top them off by the end of this battle. Uh, we're giving the 07 salute to everybody, you know, trying to be cordial. We are getting returns, so that's good. Lots more people active lately. I feel like this game, it's either because it's winter and people are coming in and playing games, or maybe it's, you know, just that time of year, or maybe we're seeing a boon in the population, but that would be awesome if that was true. The Yak-9U is known for being a really good dirt plane. It was one of the original dirt planes in the game. Uh, it's the highest tier of some of the dirt planes as well. So the Yak-9U carries 220s and a 45 millimeter like long barrel kind of sniper gun. I'm using it here because I don't want to get shot up by this light AA fire and we're not in range of any aircraft yet. Hope until now because look at that massive amount of range. We're able to get some good hits out there and when that thing connects oh man does it ever connect we're gonna let that guy burn out and now we're going to look for another target something's on my booty here though so let's go ahead and do a little bit of shake get him loose and let's find another target that's the guy that was on us a second ago good hit it took a second for it to register the amount of damage we just pumped out on him but man that 45 good hits and 220s gives you the advantage of being able to get a little bit more sustained fire out there we're going to go ahead and dip down and dive on this Hornet player controlled. Looks like it's Corey. Got some good hits with the big 45. Want to be the one to finish him. Got him with the 20s. So that's good for us. We do have a P47 up here. Player controlled. Trying to get some shots on target. And I think it's in a second here. I realize that there's another aircraft coming up behind us. And I'm overheating my guns. You don't want to overheat guns on a sniper platform because it just makes the guns even more inaccurate. We managed to get a fire with the 20s. There's the 45 and that crushed that enemy aircraft. There's that P47 from earlier. Get that big gun around and another solid derp. Again, it takes a second to register because there's just so much damage. So much damage. The server's got to crunch the numbers for you. We're going to head towards the middle. I'm kind of indicating to my team, now that we've taken the airfield, there's a couple of garrisons between here and the enemy airfield. So that's the plan. We're going to head that way. We got a JU-88P over here. That's a prime target for my big derp Tasta gun. We're going to take a pot shot here at this air defense aircraft. Good hit. Must have been a wing or something. But that second one definitely made contact. And benefit for us is that the JU-88P also got knocked out so that made short work of this zone. We do have a Yak-9, our baby brother here. We managed to knock him out fairly easily. That is going to be a bot aircraft, however. We're making our way to the airfield. I want you to note here I'm actually pretty low. I'm only at about 1,200 feet because much like my shark pain on here, I like to stay low and kind of ID a target and come up from underneath them while they're not suspecting us to be there. That was a weird situation. I don't know how I survived and he didn't, but it was neat to see him try to do that rocket attack. So, you know, good on him for making the attempt. The nice thing about the 45 is with the range, you can kind of stay at arm's length from a lot of these tail gunners. That was a mistake on his part, ramming that aircraft. But it allows us to be able to get some really good hits out on these ground attackers and the IL-8 is not known for being a frail aircraft it's pretty chunky but we're able to get some solid hits in and knock them out and since we are a multi-role we actually have a pretty decent hit point pool at nearly 400 so that allows us to be able to tank some of this damage here's one of the other player controlled aircraft typhoon typhoons are not an aircraft to be underestimated it is fairly maneuverable it is Got a good set of 20 millimeter guns on it. We're just kind of slowing down a little bit to make our circle smaller, but at the same time maintaining in the white numbers. And we are also running our, what do you call that, pneumatic control assist or pneumatic assist to be able to get a better turn. We don't have firefighter on this aircraft yet, so 
we've attrited away, unfortunately. But again, we're working towards those scale points, so hopefully we'll be able to get something by the end of this. We're going to go ahead and hop back in. We're going to spawn at our normal spawn because then I just got to take a short jog south and I can go pick up that garrison. Looks like there's a few targets over there anyways. And also note that a bunch of our allies are heading to that zone as well. I try not to, I've, I've made the mistake of going to what I perceive to be the right zone, but if I go there alone, I'm most likely going to have a really hard time of it, so I'm still going to move with the pack. The group think, or the big pack mentality, gives you advantage of numbers, and you tip the scales just by being a human player, so you can kind of get the advantage. Use those keys to designate some of these enemy... Um, aircraft so that way your bots come in to give you a hand because that new mechanic is actually pretty awesome good hit right there on that key 88 there is a few human controlled aircraft over here but they're down low we have the bf 109z and the f4u1 corsair both human controlled it looks like the f4u4 is going to be getting himself into trouble with those ground attackers especially since one of them is a specialized human and I don't know what just happened there, but it looked like the F4U just took a good hit. Got the 20s to make contact there. We managed to get that kill, and now we're going to move in towards the airfield as a pack. Do you see this pack that we're moving with? This is that moving as a team and working together. That shot was unnecessary. It looks like my buddies took him out. I would like to go after the specialized tier 7. That's, that's kind of a pain in the butt. But at the same time, there is a human here in a Mustang 1A that I don't want to ignore either. So we get some good hits with a 45, knock them out. And now let's see if we can get some good crit damage on the 109Z. Oop, almost, come on, get that nose around. Ooh, almost wingtip to wingtip there. Almost a good high five, if you would. Caused some damage, managed to get his health down a little bit. Now we're gonna gun it towards the middle of the map. We pretty much have this game handled at this point, but don't count your eggs before you hatch. Incoming, the worst roll I've ever done. Trust me, I had to practice at that one. That's got to practice to have the world's worst roll maneuver. Anyway, so we're coming in on this JU-88P. That is going to be a pretty low tier. I think that's a tier 6 ground attacker. Good hit here. And just look at that damage just chunk away at range. Now we have our IL-8 buddy yet again. Getting some good hits in here. We're not turning right away. We're making it up maneuver, trying to create a little bit of distance, slowing the aircraft down with the up and over. And now we're getting those guns on target. Come on, 45. Don't let me down now. And nope, not us. But we did pick up Wing Legends, so not for naught. Let's go ahead and see what we can do to maybe get up from underneath here and take some pot shots at these bombers. I've done this in the past where I've kind of gotten up to right about the max altitude and then I let the range of the guns reach the west, rest of the way up to high altitude. But I didn't have any boost left. I fired too much boost just trying to get up here. So as a result, I'm just stalling out. And I, I actually forced the stalls. So that way I could get my nose back around quicker so I could level off and just move towards a better target. So now we're making our way towards the remaining garrison that's already partially captured. We already see there's a bunch of blue allies over there. So we're moving with the pack. Stay with the team. And you'll find that you have a much better advantage in those engagements. Looks like we're just finally getting the registration for a bunch of the aircraft we damaged earlier. Here's Corey. Is he heading towards me? Why am I so stubborn? And, ah, uh, that's my own mistake. Really shouldn't have done that, but at this point the game's handled. And here we go to the end. Yep, good game, everybody. 16,000 even? That doesn't happen every day. All right, going back to the hangar. Let's talk a little bit about this. We've got a review. So, like I said, this thing, we just got the thing. We just got the crew, I should say. We've had the plane forever. That's why it's specialized. But 90% crew. We're up to 96% for this battle. So no skill points. None. I'll show you as soon as we get back here. I'm not, I'm not kidding you. You could also see when I hit tab at the beginning, there was no skill points attributed. So we actually got the results. That's good. But you can see we just got proficiency trained to 100 and one skill point because this pilot had nothing. In fact, uh, where is that message? Does it pop up here? Yeah, it's right there. See right there? 
The Yag-9U pilot proficiency is trained 100%, and we have a skill point. A singular skill point. So, yeah. I mean, I've had this plane for a while, and I really like it. That's why, you know, I went with the permanent paint job at the Shark here, because I like to come up from underneath other aircraft, because typically they're climbing up to face other aircraft, and since I'm kind of a mid to low altitude, I use my ability to kind of stay low and unsuspecting and dun dun, come right up and nab him. And that big 45, man, it's only a single gun, but huh. Does it ever hurt when it makes contact? So this is the original derp line of this game. There wasn't any other derp lines that were available. And sure, you've got like the Horton 229s out there. Uh, the TA-152 was also a really good sniper platform. But as far as like a straight one-shot kill platform, the Yak-7, the Yak-9, the Yak-9U, that's where it all is. So... I'm glad that I took this out for the first time in a really long time because I did move this crew on with my I-215. So it's moved on with, you know, the Su-9, the I-211, and then the I-215. So this is probably the last bit of fun you'll have in this line. And this sounds terrible to say. This is the last bit of fun you'll have in this line until you get the guns fully upgraded on the I-211 because from here the Su-9 is a weird crossover you got to learn how to fly all over again because that plane relies more on its speed the guns need to be upgraded so you can get back to the sniper build and then by the time you just about figure it out you're in the I-211 and you start out with really short range derpy guns but once you fully upgrade those then you're looking at kind of ta-152 type firepower and i've already showcased that aircraft so uh, a little while ago in fact i think the video i showcased that in i was actually shooting aircraft at like 10,000 feet from 5,000 feet because the guns had such impeccable range because again these are the sniper boats the derp planes so hope you guys enjoyed this video it's always good to throw out a nice little derp battle uh, as always I'll catch you guys on the next one. I'm marching till it's over.